Hey everyone, welcome back to Retro Break. Today we are taking a look at four brand new physical homebrew games for a variety of different retro systems. We've got a game here for the Game Boy Advance, we have one for the Dreamcast, we have one for the Nintendo 64, and we have one for the Mega Drive. So without further ado, let's check them out. Let's begin with the game for the Mega Drive. This is Demons of Asterborg, and I've actually had this game in my collection for quite a while now, thanks to the developers who actually sent me this really nice special edition kit. So let's get this unboxed first, and then we'll take a look at the game. So as you can see, it comes in this really nice box here, and inside you've got not just the cart and the manual, but you've also got a sticker sheet in there as well. And the manual is really nice, full colour as expected with these homebrew releases at this point. Really nice artwork in there, and here's a look at that sticker sheet. So, and something else really cool as well, it's actually got a reversible cover. So here's how it looks. I actually prefer this style, it matches the other games on my shelf a lot nicer. There's also a really nice replica here of the weapon that they use in the game. There's also these art cards in here which match the intro cutscene to the game which is really nice to have, and there's a fridge magnet here as well with some really nice pixel art on, and a bunch of cards here with various different characters from the game. And the best thing about this is this really nice cloth map that you get here as well. The game isn't quite what I was expecting. From the looks of it, I was expecting a straight up action platformer, but this game actually contains a lot more puzzles and a lot more slow paced navigating the environment than I was expecting. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing, it's just that I was coming at it from maybe the wrong kind of viewpoint and I didn't have as much fun as I would have liked with it. But the game is well programmed. The graphics, as you can see, are absolutely incredible. I honestly think the graphics are a highlight of the game for me. Absolutely. Just take a look at the amazing pixel art and the amazing animation here. In terms of gameplay, it's quite straightforward, but like I said, there are points in the game where you kind of come to a stop and you have to solve a certain puzzle, or you have to loop back around on yourself to figure something else out and then you end up going back to where you were before in order to progress. It's a lot of stop-start gameplay and the level design could have done with a little bit more thought put behind it, but, but on the whole it's really fun. The combat, when you get into combat, is really good. There's just not enough of it, but overall definitely recommend that you at least check the game out if you thought what you saw over the screen here looks interesting. And if you want to know more about this game and go into a lot more detail about all of the mechanics and how the entire game plays from start to finish. My friend and fellow YouTuber Steeker actually did a full review of this, so definitely go ahead and check out his video after you've finished watching this one. And now for the next game, this is Xeno Crisis for the Nintendo 64. And once again, this was given to me by the developer. I actually met him in person at OLL a few weeks ago, and we had a great time there. And I got this for the N64, and it's an incredible game. But first, let's take a quick look at what comes in the box. It's just really cool to be holding a brand new Nintendo 64 cardboard box here. On the back there you've got a bit of a description about the game and some screenshots. And here's a look at the cartridge. You can see that it's actually a completely custom made cartridge with Bitmap Bureau on the sticker on the back which is really nice to see. Of course there's also another full colour instruction manual complete with loads of information about all of the different weapons and all of the different characters in the game which is just fantastic. And it wasn't until I was clearing my game room out that I actually found my Evercade. And it actually turns out I did actually already own this game on the Evercade right there, along with Tanglewood, another homebrew for the Mega Drive. So now let's check out what Xeno Crisis is all about. And wow, I was completely blown away by this game. It way exceeded any expectations I had from it. First of all, it plays really well on the N64. The controls just feel so suited to the controller. You use the analog stick to move and you use the C buttons to aim in specific directions and it just works so well. It makes me wish that there was more games like this on the system. The only other one that I can think of is Robotron 64. But honestly this is one of the best N64 games that I've played and I know that this game's available on loads of different systems. It's on the Mega Drive, it's on the Dreamcast, it's on Neo Geo, it's on the Evercade as I mentioned earlier. But this N64 version, I haven't really played any of the other ones but honestly it feels fantastic. The programmers did an incredible job of getting this to run really smoothly on the system. It's also got really full featured voice samples. It's got great controls like I mentioned. And something I didn't mention yet but what's even more exciting is the incredible music. This honestly has one of the best game soundtracks that I've ever heard. Just have a quick listen to some of this. It's 
Isn't that just absolutely incredible? And the game itself is just so much fun to play as well. I haven't managed to finish it just yet, but I did play a lot of it on stream, and I got pretty far and easy, and I really wanted to get to the end of it on hard mode, but it's just way too difficult. But it is definitely a game that I'll go back to and play more of soon. Absolutely loved this one. And now for the Dreamcast version of Andro Dunas 2, and I did already do a video on this game when it came out on the 3DS a few years ago. It was one of the final 3DS releases, and at the end of that video I basically said that it's a good game buried under a very bad port of the game. And unfortunately, I was hoping this wouldn't be the case, but the same is true for the Dreamcast version here. It runs at an even lower frame rate than the 3DS game, which I think is unforgivable. The Dreamcast could easily run this game at 60 frames a second. It's a basic 2D side-scrolling shooter. The Dreamcast has had so much more bigger, more detailed environments and projects that run way better than this game, so I was very disappointed from that point of view. But like I said, underneath those technical issues is an incredible shoot-em-up for the system. Although, this is definitely not the best way to play the game. And it is such a shame because I was really looking forward to getting the Dreamcast version. Because I love the Dreamcast and it's so great that people are making brand new games for the system. And I do actually have a bunch of other brand new games for the Dreamcast as well, which maybe in the future I'll do a video on. I picked these up at a different expo at some point last year, I believe. So yeah, I definitely want to go ahead and check these ones out. Let me know whether you've played any of them down in the comments below. And the final game here is a game for the Game Boy Advance, and you don't really see that many brand new GBA games, so this was quite exciting when this one turned up. This is called Inky and the Alien Aquarium. And this one again was sent over to me by the developers called Pocket Pulp, and it's a really fun game. It's really cute, really colourful. The gameplay is kind of basic. Basically, you just move around on this grid, and you either push orbs around or you push these weird see-through cylinders around and you go around these various levels and you pick up different treasures. There's not much more to it than that, it's a very simple game but it's executed extremely well and I'm definitely looking forward to playing more of it. I've only played it for about half an hour at the minute because I was kind of rushing to get this video out before I go on holiday to be honest but I do want to play more of it in the future so if you like what you see in here definitely go ahead and check out Pocket Pulp. I'll put a link to their website down in the description below. Definitely go and check out this game. It's really cute. It's really fun. And that is it. That was four brand new games for Retro Systems. I really hope you enjoyed having a look at all of these. Thank you all so much for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoyed it. Please, of course, check out Patreon to join everyone going across the side of the screen right there. And I'll see you all again very soon for another video. Goodbye.